Hi, today is the video that even won't be missing on my channel and this is how to wear a kimono. In case you're here for the first time, my name is Billy Matsunaga and I'm a fully trained and certified kimono teacher and a stylist living in Kumamoto, Japan. In this video, I'm going to show you how to put on a kimono. And we all know I use a lot of special items. I often have lots of DIYs for those items on my channel here. But today I'm going to show you the most basic way. When you are a total beginner, this is the right video for you. As I often emphasize on my channel, yukata and kimono is something totally different. And also when you put it on, it's slightly different you can use some of the same tricks but not all and by the way yukata is so much harder to put on because you have to concentrate on everything at one time kimono makes it so much easier because you have an undergarment which is this white color you can see here under my kimono and this white color makes sure that your kimono color is really nice and when you put on the undergarment right, your kimono will look so much better. By the way, I have another tutorial for the undergarment. It's not a long video, so I would like you to jump first to the undergarment video, put on the undergarment and then come back here and continue with this tutorial. I will put the link down below for the undergarment video. I said it probably about a thousand times here on my channel, I wear my kimono with elastics, but this video is for total kimono beginners. So I was thinking about the most basic things you would get in a kimono dress up set, which is also called kitsuke set. And this would be himo and you need two of them. If you don't have them, this one is by the way one I made by myself and you can watch a tutorial also here on my channel. It's a bit long so you can jump over to the important part and then just make this. We will also need a so-called datemaki, which you can actually also leave out. You will see later that this time I only used this to tie down the bulky parts of the tie um, I actually don't use datemaki at all anymore, so you don't need that. They are also, by the way, called datejime. My school calls them datemaki. Be aware that every school, every teacher calls their items differently. And uh, the last thing we need is a so-called obita. I have one with those uh, straps on the side, which, is, which are actually elastics. And it's easier to put this on because you will only have to clip it and then turn it around, which you will also see later. But when you are about to purchase a kimono set, I usually recommend to have an obi with those elastic straps on the sides. And that was it. You will see it's super easy to put on a kimono. And let's jump right into it. Put the kimono on your shoulder. Put your hands through the sleeves. There are two openings under your arms. One that is connected to the sleeves and one that is called miyatsuguchi. Don't put your arms through that, it won't help you. Take the end of the nagajupan sleeves Swipe along the shoulder line to make sure to pass into the sleeves properly. Stop in the middle and let the nagajupan sleeve fall. Put your hand through the opening. Hold the kimono sleeve and nagajupan sleeve together. Shake them a little to align them nicely. Put the little folds called kyoeni on the collar together and hold them with your right hand while your left hand reaches out to the center back seam. Pull the kimono with the left hand down and set it back gently onto the nagajupan collar with your right hand. Let both hands hold the kyoeri and slide down until 20 cm or 8 inches from the end of the collar. This is also usually where the colored lining ends. 
Hold the kimono there and lift it over your hips. Let the kimono slide down until the hem touches the floor. Bring now the left side to your right and adjust the width. For adjusting the width, open up the kimono again. When you pull with your left hand, the width will become wider. When you pull with your right hand, it will become smaller. Use this to find the perfect width. The kimono should end with your right hip bone. Open up the left side and bring the right to your left. When you reach the left side, lift the kimono with your hand for about 10 cm or 4 inches and tuck it with your left elbow. Put your free right hand into the opening under your shoulder, Miyatsuguchi, and pull the kimono gently upwards to remove wrinkles, but don't lift the kimono. Bring the left side to your right and lift it for about 5 cm or 2 inches. Hold the end of the eddy with your right hand and remove again with your free left hand the wrinkles. Either way, the right hand will secure the kimono for you forever and ever. You could even walk around like this, but I don't really recommend walking around. You'll see why in a few moments. Take the first tie, also called koshi himo, and place it over your koshi, which is Japanese for hips. Cross the tie on the back, pull to tighten. And tie a half bow on the front by pulling one end through. Tuck the ends in. Put your hands under the tie on the back and slide to the side to remove wrinkles to also place the tie a little higher than you've tied it. Put the lower layer of the tie from the center to the left, diagonally upwards. Put now the hands into the Miyatsuguchi and pull the kimono gently down with the edge of your flat hands. Slide to the side and repeat this step until you can slide to the front smoothly. Do also pull down the kimono gently on the front. Put your right hand into the top layer and slide from left to right. Your left hand is still inside. Open up the front skirt of your kimono with the right hand. When the lower layer did fall down, pull it up with your left hand that is holding this layer inside. And you shouldn't walk around without tying a tie because the lower layer will fall down like this. It should be lifted for about 10 cm or 4 inches. Put again the Kyo Eddy together and readjust the collar on the Nagajupan like we did before. Put the collar gently together and reach out for the second tie, also called Munahimo. Muna stands for chest, so please place it under your chest inside of the kimono. Let me show you what happens inside. You hold the right collar with your left hand under your chest. Then you fold up the collar by sliding gently upwards and place it nicely on the Nagajuban collar when you slide back down. On the bottom of this inside fabric, you have a lot of leftover fabric you don't need. Fold this from left to right upwards. and pull the end on the right side diagonally down. Secure this with the tie by wrapping the right side around your upper waist. And here is how it should look on the outside. Wrap the tie around your waist, 
cross it on the back. Pull to tighten and hold both hands of the tie with your left hand while your right hand folds up the collar by sliding upwards and places the collar onto the Nagajipan collar when sliding downwards. Tie another half bow by pulling one end through. Straighten out a little and make sure that the collar on the right has a full width. and is folded in at the height of the tie for about 1.5 cm or half an inch. Pull down the center back seam on the big fold we have created earlier. Put your pointer under the tie to slide to the side and straighten out. Change hands and repeat. Pull then the fold down gently and pull the sides over the tie to the front. Put the datejime over the second tie, which I totally obviously forgot how to do here, to smoothen out the front. Cross it on the back by pulling the right side diagonally down while wrapping the left side straight to your right. Fold the right side up and pull to tighten. Cross both sides on the front and pull the left side through the triangle you have created twice. Pull to tighten and make the same knot under the first one. Tuck the ends in. Reach out for the obieta. Close the elastics on the front and turn the obieta to the front always from left to right. And you are finished! And with an obi it should look like this. This obi arrangement is very simple but elegant and perfect for kimono and yukata. I put a link for this tutorial in the description box down below. Putting on a kimono takes a lot of practice and I really hope that you kind of get really addicted to it and try a lot so you get into the shape you want to have your kimono very soon. I hope you found this video a little helpful. I try to have everything as detailed as I can and I filmed all takes just in one time so you can see even I don't have good days every time. I hope you are considering to subscribe to this channel now if you haven't yet. If you did, thank you so much. Thank you so much for watching. I'm always looking forward to reading your comments and I also look forward to requests for future videos. And I talk to you in my video next week. Bye!